Okay, hey guys, welcome to Lighthouse Woodworks. I am Lucas Jablonski. I am the owner of Lighthouse Woodworks. This is my shop. Welcome. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, Total Boats Epoxy. We're on Total Boats Live. So I use a lot of epoxy from Total Boat and for many different applications. Um, river tables we make, we use epoxy for a coating. We use it for signs, for charcuterie boards, just many different ways to fill in engraving. And um, over the years, using epoxy for so long, I've come to realize when and why I'll use a different epoxy, right? And um, so, for example, we'll use tabletop as a coating. So we've done quite a few bars and restaurants where they want that really thick extra layer of protection for their their surface and um, in that protection they want to make sure that it, there's no water no scratches anything is ever going to penetrate through the finish and into the wood um, especially for hygiene and everything so in that application I always push to go with a tabletop finish when there's getting s such high traffic and so much abuse. And today we're going to be showing you an example of how I use tabletop to finish a surface. I have here this piece of walnut um, that has been sanded and is clean. And we will be mixing up this tabletop to put it on this surface. Now, before I start, I just wanted to say a huge shout out to Kristen and congratulations to Kristen for n suffering nine years at Total Boat. Um, everybody, you can give yourself her a round of applause. But um, also, so in this live, we're going to be doing a giveaway. Now, this giveaway, all you have to do is comment. You can comment anything you want. Maybe you could say, like, Lucas is the best. Nobody's more handsome than Lucas. Um, I love Lucas and you can enter the giveaway by doing that. So what we're going to be giving away is actually a kit of what I'll be using here, this tabletop. So what you learn in this live, you could receive exactly what I'm using to do it yourself. Maybe you have a little project at home or uh, you could use it for a project coming up. Anyways, just leave a comment and you automatically will enter to receive a gallon of tabletop epoxy plus Total Boat will throw you in some swag and some goodies. Um, here, what we have in front of us are a couple different epoxies. The tabletop, which we obviously will be using today. Then we have, which is actually a very convenient epoxy that I use uh, for quick fixes, small things when I don't have a large project that needs a lot of epoxy, maybe a little knot. I'll use this four minute epoxy by Total Boat. And all I do is just, they also sell pigment. And you can, I add a little bit of black pigment, pigment. usually it's black pigment, um, because we work with a lot of walnut. Here, I don't know if you can see, is a little knot that I filled with black pigment. Um, and it just gives it a nice clean look. So this uh, formate epoxy is great for that type of application. Then also here we have the U UV cure epoxy, right? This is nice because it also comes with a little flashlight and it literally is cured by the UV rays. And um, this is not a great flashlight, Kristen told me. Um, so if you're going to use this epoxy, it's fun, but maybe get a better flashlight. Um, but it's uh, good for certain things too, like little knots and little cracks that you need to fix. Now, many times I've used epoxies that weren't liquid. Like I've used epoxies that are two-part um, clay-like. And mixing them together, they, they begin to react and harden. Now, I've used those in the past for filling cracks. And what happens with those is when you have wood movement going on, especially here in New England where I'm from, we have constant seasonal movement in the wood. These old, old houses with this old dry heating will dry out the wood and make the wood shrink and then in the summer it gets very humid here and hot and the, the AC is running and the heat's not and it starts soaking up water. Now when that happens I've had the, that filler crack on me or fall out or split a little bit. So I stopped using that and I started using tabletop to fill my cracks. Now I have a slab here 
I'd like to show you an example of what I would fill, right? So here you can see in this piece of Live Edge that is full of cracks. Working with Live Edge, oftentimes you have a lot of splitting. Now this here, I can fit my finger all the way through. It's not a place that I would choose to put tabletop in. I would use more of a deep pour, um, thick set type of epoxy for, for here. However, that's pretty extreme. Now we have smaller cracks here and over here that I would be totally comfortable putting tabletop epoxy in there. And why I like to put epoxy in there is that it bonds back to the wood and if it's going to move over from the seasonal movement, the crack isn't going to split more. And um, so that is one reason why I use tabletop to fill my cracks, especially if they're at the end of the table. Somewhere over here, a little crack is not going to have so much seasonal movement in it as it will with the end grain showing, receiving and letting out moisture. Now, that is one application, reason for application that I would use tabletop, right? Now, the second one is as a coating, right? And here I have a little charcuterie board that I've done. It's, you know, kind of like your fancy oceans that are going on out there. Uh, I don't really do many of these. This was just a, a fun little project just to try it out. However, I wanted to show you this not because of the ocean, but I wanted to show you this because of how the epoxy looks when it's cured, because we're not going to have a chance to be live for 24 hours for you guys to wait for this to dry and see how durable it is and everything. Now, with this, my intention is to show you how durable it is as a coating, right? So when you have a normal finish, a varnish or an oil finish, the nice thing about those finishes is that, you know, they're repairable, easily repairable, especially oil finish. Now with epoxy, it's meant to be bulletproof for, for a finish, to protect the wood. And um, I don't know if you guys are able to see, but th using tabletop epoxy or any type of epoxy as a coating, it's very high gloss, right? So it gives you that standard bar look. Anyways, if you're just joining us, what we're going to be doing is refinishing this top here, showing you exactly how I use tabletop epoxy to finish this. Now, first thing I'm going to do is put on my gloves, because Kristen hates when I don't wear gloves. And um, yeah, you don't want to get this on your, your skin. I'm just joking, but you don't, you don't want to get this on your skin because what's going to happen is that it, it's impossible to clean off and it can affect you and it's not, it's not fun. So what we're going to do, normally what I do when I'm about to pour a river or I'm using any type of epoxy, I calculate it. Now how you calculate the proper amount of epoxy to use because it happens all the time that people will use epoxy and not exactly know how much they need to mix up and they try to stay under and then they have to mix more and it becomes a problem because if you mix too much then it just goes to waste and it's all down the drain. Now, um, what I do is I take my length times my width times my thickness and that will give you cubic inches. Now you can take those cubic inches and take them into Google and translate them into whatever you're measuring in. Ounces, liters, gallons, however, and that will give you a very accurate measurement of how much epoxy you'll need to do. Now Total Boat sends me, and you can get these um, different ways to measure epoxy. Now here I have four different cups, and depending on the process, I'll use a different one, but today I'll, I'll be sticking with the smaller one because I don't have too much epoxy to pour in this tabletop. Now that I know roughly my length, so let's say here we have our length, and we're going to take our thickness, our width, times our thickness, right? So now my thickness, just to be a little generous, I say that I'm going to pour a quarter inch thick with the tabletop. After we spread it, it will change a little bit. So let's start mixing this up. So basically tabletop is a one to one ratio epoxy. And so I'll take my first part A and we can come here to the one to one ratio on our cup. And you have a one and a one, a two and a two. A lot of people don't really know how to use these. It's interesting. But you can go four to four and get two equal parts, right? And you just follow those lines. So let's start with that. We're going to mix up. Here is my part A, and we're going to fill that up to that number four line, 
because prior to the live, I already had measured how much epoxy I should need. All right. And then we'll take our part B. And we'll fill up to the next number four line. Okay. Now, when it comes to mixing this, what you don't want to do is use a paddle bit, right? Um, because the tabletop epoxy is very thick. And when you are mixing it, the more with a paddle bit, you're introducing air because the way it spins is it pulls the material down. And in doing that, it introduces air. Right now, if you can see that this epoxy has very few air bubbles in it. Now, as I mix, we're going to introduce some air, but if you use a pedal bit, you're introducing a ton of air. And now, when the epoxy is that thick, what's going to happen is that it won't have time to let all those bubbles release. And then in that situation, you could just have a lot of air bubbles stuck inside your epoxy. And you try to use a heat gun to force them out, and then you heat, use too much of the heat gun, and then it makes the epoxy react, and then it starts curing too fast on you, and it's a mess. So in order to avoid any of those issues, when I'm using a thicker epoxy, like tabletop epoxy, I use a stick, right? And I just take my time mixing it, make sure it's nice and solid. One thing that I like to look for when I'm mixing epoxy is that you can see that part B generally is thinner material than part A. Part A is thicker and gooier. And when you're mixing, it be becomes to swirl together like grease and water. And you can start to, you see those swirls. Now I generally just mix until I don't see those swirls anymore. One other really important part about mixing epoxy, in my opinion, or my experience, what has happened in the past, is if you don't thoroughly take your stick and scrape the sides of your container, that part A that is thicker, that's stuck to it, is not going to cure properly. Or it's going to leave a streak when you pour it on top of your, your wood and can cause issues, can cause little lines inside of the table that are sticky from where exactly that grease line was left and just can create issues. So I just like to make sure the best thing is just to mix it as thoroughly as possible and keep an eye looking for those uh, streaks. So I've been now mixing maybe, I don't know, a couple minutes. It's starting to get thinner, clearer, if you will, and, but I'm still seeing streaks, so I'll just keep going. A second here, I'll show you what it's looking like using a stick that I do by mixing, I'm pulling some air into it. However, it's not so much that it's going to cause us air bubbles not to be able to leave, right? So let's see if you can see this here. I don't know if you can tell, but there are some air bubbles in there. But enough that can release once it's all poured, okay? Let's see. So if you are a little bit concerned about how you're going to mix the proper amount of epoxy, Totobo also has a calculator on their website that you can just punch in your numbers and it will just give you exactly what you need instead of doing all the math like I do because I guess I'm not that smart. It'd be much easier to just go to Totobo's website, I guess, which I probably will start doing from now on. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm happy. I'm not seeing any streaks in there. This is looking very clear to me. And one really cool thing about this is how this epoxy, when it sits, lands on this piece of wood, how it changes the color drastically. So now what I'm gonna do, now that I got it mixed pretty thoroughly, I'm just going to pour it on here, right? I'm gonna let it hit, fall some kind of paper underneath, but it's about time for me to change my subboard under here anyway, so I don't care if epoxy gets on it. But, so we'll pour some epoxy. Pour it 
pour this out all around. And grab my stick again. Get everything out of there. So you can see, I'll bring the camera over here before I start spreading this around, the air bubbles that are in there. Bring you over. So you can see little air bubbles in there, right? However, if I had mixed this with a paddle bit, it would be basically white from there being so many air bubbles inside of the epoxy. And it would be, make it very difficult for, to get all that to escape. Now, a little unconventional, the way I start doing this, because my, what I feel I like to do, being a woodworker for 20 years now, I'm celebrating this year 20 years of woodworking, full time, I like to feel with my hands what's going on. So we have these spreaders, which I will use. Total Boat provides these spreaders you can get from their website. And the scraper here has different size teeth, right? Depending on how thick you want your tabletop pour to be. But now, what I do before I use the spreader is I just take my glove and I spread it by hand. So I just literally just grab it like this and I'm going around. Why I like to do this for myself is that I can feel better where it's thicker and where it's thinner. It will self-level, total, total, uh, tabletop epoxy will self-level, but just to make sure that I have this good feel of making sure that everything is actually covered properly, Doing it by hand like this is very, makes me uh, more confident. Just my, my style of woodworking, my style of doing things, feeling by hand. Now, as I spread this, what I'm going to do is do the same thing because question that people ask me is how the best way to do the edges, right? Now, one question that I saw on um, Instagram that somebody asked was, can you pour tabletop on a vertical surface without it dripping? Now, that might be a better answer. They could probably answer that better for you, but for me, you can, and it, you won't see necessarily the streaks because I always pour on vertical spots like this. However, it will dry solid and dry clean, but it will still drip. So I just take my hand with this epoxy, and then I just go and I cover all the edges, wiping it on because can't really use the spreader over here um, to get it on and I just like to just feel you can feel you can when you're doing this you can actually feel where it's more dry and where it's properly soaked or penetrated by the epoxy like I can run my hand across here and I feel that I don't even need to look at it I can feel that what is properly uh, coated now, just go around, I'll do all the sides. So, when I am prepping my wood here, with epoxy, uh, especially like a tabletop epoxy, and also with like river tables too, it, it can change. But I personally prefer to sand to a lower grit, especially for river tables, because it opens the pores more for the epoxy to penetrate. Now, if you sand to a higher grit, like a 220 or 400, really you're closing a lot of pores, letting the epoxy or your finish in general penetrate less. So the more open your pores are, the deeper the epoxy is going to penetrate. It's like if you're staining wood, for example, and you sand a same piece of wood, which I have a video about this on my YouTube, if you um, sand the same piece of wood, 80 grit over here and 400 grit over here, and you apply stain to both pieces, the lower grit sanded area will be darker because it is soaking in more stain. The 400 grit sanded area is kind of closed, right? So you can technically sand so high that it, it becomes a finish because you close the pores so well from such high grit 
that it's not allowing things to penetrate into that wood. And then it becomes, it even becomes shiny and buffy, shiny like this epoxy does. Now, okay, I'm happy with how that spread. I will change my gloves real quick. And what we'll do now, what I'll do now is take the spreader because you could see in their waviness, right? So now with this spreader, what it's going to do for me, because I like, I pour it a little thick because right now we're gonna do one coat. Normally what I would do is do a thin coat, let it cure, and then you'll see where there are maybe, like you can see little craters where it's sucked into the wood more than other places. Um, and in that place, in a situation where I'm gonna pour two coats of Total Boat tabletop, I'll spread this on the thinner side because I can then have two, co two coats that make it a little bit thicker, but that after you pour the first layer, the second layer lays on like pure glass. So in the first layer, you might get a little bit of divots and craters here, like air bubbles, epoxy soaking in and releasing air. But um, given that I'm just gonna do one piece on this, this sample, this was a bench that was in my showroom, I decided it's about time I have something in there that has just tabletop finish for my clients to see. I thought this would be a good option. So now we can just take our bigger tooth side and you can see, I can see over here that there's a lot more epoxy than over here. So I want to use that and try to spread some of this this way, right? I don't know if you can see on the camera how it is actually scooping it forward because it's going through the teeth and then right there, it over, it's over filled here, so then it pulls that part that's overfilled and starts evening it out, like a, like a rake. So now, pretty comfortable with where it's hitting the teeth everywhere. You see that it's evenly hitting the teeth throughout the whole surface. And I like that. Now, you see that I just left a bunch of marks in there. And as, as we go, the tabletop itself is starting to self-level. Now what we can do, if we let this sit, because I'm not a huge fan of using heat guns on epoxy, um, because we can let this sit, and I'm confident in the way that I mixed it, that with these amount of bubbles, 99% chance that these are going to self-pop, right? People can easily overdo it with the, the heat gun and just make sure everything's popped and then they keep coming so then they keep bringing heat guns into it and then you end up making your epoxy over cure and it can actually have a reaction where it just starts, just takes off on you and, and um, it's dangerous, it's not fun because then you basically ruin the whole piece of wood. Now I can see these are already popping on me, however, for the sake of it, we will We will use the heat gun. Now, let me bring you in here just so you can see this because this is one of more satisfying things and this is why I think a lot of people like to do this on Instagram is to see the bubbles getting popped. But in most cases, it's not really necessary to do. But you can see, I want to show you how mixing the epoxy properly, it's very easy to get rid of the bubbles that are there. So I'm not over curing the epoxy by doing what I just did because it was a very quick flash. But now you see that there are no bubbles in there. Maybe a little bit of air is going to still seep through as it continues to penetrate into the wood. But that is going to cure beautifully. You can see how glossy it is, how it's shining there, right? Now, so what I would do is just let that sit as it is overnight, and then I would come in in the morning and I would do a second coat. Now, you can see towards the bottom here, we're dripping, but the side of my table looks beautiful. Now, what I would do when this is cured, we're going to have a lot of drips on the bottom. Like you can see on this piece here, 
as we it cures, there are a bunch of little balls, drips there. So what I would do on this, this is not a finished piece, I would just sand this off, right? Because if you sand the bottom there, it's going to look nice and clean. And if you're going to do a project that needs to be coated, you're going to coat all around to seal it completely from any moisture, any weather. What I would do is I would do this to the bottom first and let it drip and maybe put a little thinner coat on the sides when I'm doing the bottom to try to cause a little less dripping. But also, once that's cured, you flip it over to the top and then you, put, uh, you can sand off all those drips and then do the top as if I did it now, right? So then you have the bottom sealed and you have the top sealed and all the drips are now going to be on that bottom area, right? And so you can, a lot of people have tried using blue tape to stop, peel off the, the, the drips when they're happening. There comes a point with epoxy when it begins to cure that it stops dripping, but it's still gooey enough to, to, to deal with. The only issue I have with that is that you have to be around, right? I don't have a shop in my, my house. I'm at work I'm in my own shop. And so I have to deal things the way that um, I can. So now, what else do we got here? What I would do, again, if I were going to use this to fill cracks in a table, for example, this piece of live edge, tabletop epoxy is really thick and it's meant to be poured only around a quarter inch thick, uh, eighth inch thick. So this gap here and this hole is much thicker than that. So I would never be able to use tabletop epoxy to fill this crack unless I did it in multiple layers. Now, this crack over here is about, it goes from like an eighth inch to a quarter inch. I don't know if you guys can see it. And I would fill this whole thing with tabletop epoxy. Now, I have behind you a table that we're working on that we did exactly that here. This is all my knots and cracks filled with tabletop epoxy. You can see that there are two different processes that I did. Over here, you could see that this is a much bigger crack that's already been filled. So that was with a different epoxy than with the smaller ones. Because if I poured that much tabletop epoxy in there, it would overheat and overcure and wouldn't bond how I need to. And hopefully it doesn't crack. But in this case, this is a good example of how I use tabletop to fill knots and holes. So I do it tonight, this evening, and tomorrow morning it's ready to sand off. Now I don't know if there are any questions out there that I can help answer, but this is basically my process. Now, again, during this live, we're, be, we're doing a giveaway, right? Anybody who leaves any comment down in the messages will be receiving... One winner will receive a kit of doing exactly what I just did, which you see how, how far it goes, right? I used that uh, basically just one of these cups full was exactly enough to cover this entire piece. And I still have quite a bit left in these containers. So it goes, goes a decent amount away. And uh, so if you guys ever want to try this, do a project like this, you know, enter the giveaway. Just leave a comment and one winner will be able to receive this, some swag and some other goodies. Now, if you are looking to purchase tabletop epoxy, or any epoxy f f for that matter, you can use, I have uh, totalboat.com slash lighthouse, and you can save quite a bit by using my affiliate link to help me as a maker, to help you save money, to help our beloved friends at Total Boat continue growing their beautiful company. It's, it's, it's all, for, for good, right? So, okay, what else? Now, again, when you have a situation, like in this board here, I only had this one little knot, right? Is it necessary for me to go and mix all this up? If that's what I have, that's what I will do. But in a situation like that, you can use something a little simpler. Like the four minute epoxy, this stuff cures in four minutes, you squeeze it out of the tube and mix this together. You just take a little popsicle stick, mix it together 
add a little pigment of your color. This is black. I do a lot of black with the walnut and it just blends it in and makes it nice and flat. The problem, if you don't fill all your cracks and knots well in your wood when using tabletop epoxy, if it's not sealed well like any, any knots, any divots, your tabletop epoxy will start to crater in there, start to seek, it seep into those holes and then you won't have a flat glossy finish like this. You'll see where that knot is, it will be going down and it won't be nice and flat. So when I'm prepping my surface before putting finish on it, before putting tabletop epoxy on it, I'll make sure that everything is filled nice and well so that when I pour that epoxy, especially with this high gloss, you see every little imperfection. And so this is a great situation. If you just have one knot and you don't want to wait 24 hours for it to dry, and to sand, you just need to get it done. This is a very easy fix for that. Also, you can do the same with a UV because what happens with a UV um, resin is that once you introduce UV light to it, it begins to cure and it's ready to go. So, um, so when you are um, Sealing, so in this situation here, what we did, we just poured epoxy on top, right? And in most cases for me, I will come back and use this as my sealer. There are different types of epoxies that you can get. Like, for example, I have penetrating epoxy, which is just a thinner version, and it soaks deeper into the wood, it gives you a nice sealant so that you can close all the grain, and then you can just pour a nice layer of tabletop epoxy on top of it, and you're in great shape. You don't have to worry about air coming through, craters getting formed, all of that. However, what I generally do if I don't have um, any other epoxy, just to purchase one epoxy, I'll just use tabletop and a thinner coat to seal my wood and then I will let that cure and then apply a second coat making sure that all those air bubbles are, are gone. If I need to do a little hand sanding, a little scuffing, if any craters form or air bubbles harden on the surface, knock those off. And then what happens is once you sand, you apply a new coat, it's filling in all of the scratches that you're making with the sandpaper. So it becomes right back to glass. So anyways, this is my process. I don't know how long I've been talking. I hope this has been helpful for everybody. Please, if you guys want, um, enter the giveaway. For those who have give, entered, you can enter to win this. Um, if you're looking to purchase Total Boat Epoxy, feel free to use my, my code Lighthouse to save. And um, hope this was helpful and love to do this again soon. If you have any questions, feel free to bring them. Uh, send them to Total Boat, send them to me. I'm more than happy to help. Thank you guys.